title of the sermon today is a heart burning experience. I like burning firewood on the campground, especially late at night, just myself. Words like passion, commitment, sacrifice, and great cause arise in my heart along with flames. Some people would say, you know, um, their heart burns when they are in love. I ponder the expression, our heart burn within us through this week. You know, if you like to make a fire, you need fuel. If you want to keep the fire, you need to continue to supply it. So let me ask you a question. What would be a fire starter and fuel to burn a heart? It would be love and passion for someone or and something. So who, who makes your heart burn? And what, what makes your heart burn? You know, one day I was driving and listening to a radio show. The guest was one of the most famous mountainers in Korea. The host asked him, don't you think it's dangerous? Every time you climb, you could die there. Then he said, it would be a great honor for mountainer to die as they climb. I was sure mountains made his heart burn. One of the young activists during Japanese colony, she said, I have only one life that I can burn. I can, I can burn for the freedom of my country. It is the only, only thing that makes me sad. The freedom of the country burned to her heart and she sacrificed her life for the cause. If you have someone to make your heart burn, you are very blessed. If you have been doing something that makes your heart burn, you are very blessed. Today's Bible story talks about two men who had experienced heart burning, Cleopas and his friend were heading to a mouse from Jerusalem. On the way, resurrected Jesus appeared to them without letting, letting them to recognize him. They were perplexed with everything that happened in Jerusalem concerning Jesus. After rebuking their ignorance and lack of faith, Jesus taught them what the scriptures talk about the Messiah. I, I personally wish that this Bible study was recorded. It would be the best Bible study material about Jesus Christ. How did they feel after taking that special Bible study? They expressed their feelings only after Jesus disappeared. They said, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? They said that Jesus opened the scriptures. Interesting. Did Jesus carry his, you know, his pocket Bible in his pocket? Or did he always carry study Bible? No. At the time, there was no such thing. The Bible was written in a big scroll and put it in the synagogue. It was carried out to read on the Sabbath days. Then what did Jesus open? He opened the scriptures that were in his heart. He was able to connect all the Old Testaments to explain the life and role of the Messiah without physically, without opening physical Bible. How? So what did the knowledge, what did the knowledge of the Bible that Jesus had done? 
First, it burned Jesus' heart. His heart always burned for the work of the Father and love for the lost. John 2.17 talks about it. A zeal for your house will consume me. He also said this after talking to a Samaritan woman. John 4.34 My food is to the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Ultimately, he obeyed to have the baptism of crucifixion and gave his life to save all mankind. And he said before he died, it is finished. Second, the knowledge of the Bible that Jesus had made his fire to transfer to others. So as we read the dialogue on the way to Emmaus, Jesus made his disciples' heart to burn. But not only uh, these two disciples, but also other 112 disciples who gathered at a house and received the Holy Spirit. After that, fire in their hearts, in the disciples' heart, was transferred to all over the world. They had a reputation like this. Acts 17, um, 3. In Acts 17, actually 6. Um, these who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Jesus promised before uh, he went to heaven. John 14, 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. To make this promise to be our reality, we need to remember what Jesus said minutes later. John 15, 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. That's why the Bible commands Deuteronomy 6.6, 6, These words which I command you today shall be in your heart. I introduced Know Your Bible Project last week. More than 20 people are going to do it with accountability. I praise God for that. My excitement over this project is getting big and bigger. Some of you even have mentioned that they've been waiting for something like this in their Christian life. Praise God. Now, for the, um, the first four books, will be Mark, Genesis, John, and Exodus. You know, as I said last week, we are going to start, um, we are going to do it different order than the following Bible order. And we are going to start from January 10th, uh, start with Mark chapter 1. Okay? Um, as I talked to some of you, and then they, they worried about their retention ability. You know, let me share a quote with you from a book that I recently uh, read. It says, The studies of the psychologist Carol Dweck have gotten huge attention uh, for showing just how big an impact one simple conviction can have on learning and performance. The belief that your level of intellectual ability is not fixed but rests to a large degree in your own hands. So, first, remember your ability to remember um, will be increased as days goes by. So you don't really have to worry about uh, your ability to remember because eventually it will grow uh, bigger and bigger. Okay? And second, the exam that you are going to take is for self-testing your memory. It's, it won't be like a squeak exam, so don't worry about it. Everyone's attention would be different. Of course, right? 
What matters is not to give up, but keep doing it with lots of prayer. So in short, don't worry about retention. Do what you can do with the prayer and have peace in your heart. And um, from now on, I'm going to show you a sample study, like a mock lesson, um, in a short version. Uh, since we have studied Luke chapter 24 this morning, let's do it with this chapter, okay? So I start uh, with the pray. So I pray, my Father in heaven, um, please open my eyes to see wondrous things from your law. And please bless me to understand and remember uh, as I study this chapter. I also pray that you may speak to me so that I may listen and obey you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, after prayer, um, then I read. I read with a prayerful heart. I would read dif uh, with different versions of the Bible, such as New King James Version, King James Version, Complete Jewish Bible, New International Version, Literal Translation, and Amplified Bible, and more. But I don't read them all every day. You know, I would read two or three versions, and it, it would take about 10 minutes, okay? Reading a chapter, about 10 minutes, after that, um, I'm going to give a title to a chapter. So I give a title to Luke chapter 24, Resurrection and Post-Resurrection Events. Okay. Um, then I select a key verse uh, from this chapter and I choose 48. And you are witness of these things. So after selecting key verse, then I, I will begin to make outline. Okay, so I start, Jesus resurrected and talked to women. Um, the Bible study on the way to Emmaus. Um, Behold my hands and my feet, and be a witnesser, went to back to the Father. So this, I'm, I'm going to give you some hints. You know, um, as you make outline or as you make give title to a chapter, uh, use expressions from a chapter instead of creating new phrases. Some versions of the Bible have small titles within a chapter. You can use them if you like them, but just don't think it too hard. You know? And next, after making outlines, you would make summary. And it's the first self-test, okay? Um, so instead of looking at the chapter again, you make a summary with your memory. Either increase uh, your memory, okay? Um, so it doesn't have to be perfect. You Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. It, even it doesn't have to be decent. You know, just to do it for your memory, your benefit and write about three sentences, that would be enough, okay? And this is my summary. So Jesus resurrected and showed himself to his disciples. He had a very special Bible study with two of them. He gave the mission uh, to his disciples and went to back to the Father. Okay, from giving a title uh, to a summary, would it take another 10 minutes. So reading 10 minutes and giving title to summary another 10 minutes. After that, let's go to the meditation part. So as I was praying, reading, and studying, the Holy Spirit inspired me to ponder more about um, verses 49 to 53. So my focus will be shift from whole chapter to verses 49 to 53. So I read um, those verses several times with a prayer for heart. And then um, I make a summary for those verses, a uh, paraphrase. So this will be my summary of those verses. 
Jesus told his disciples to wait for the promise of his father and went up to heaven. The disciples returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Then I began to meditate. And the promise of the Father, mm, it, it's about the Holy Spirit, uh, Terry, and the city. Okay, so this is a, there is a time to wait with patience and with a great joy, praising and blessing God. This should be the attitude of the waiting for God's time and promise. So after meditation, then I find principles. So when I wait for God's time and promise, my heart should be filled with joy, praises, and blessings. So after writing down principles, I make a project. So I've been anxious over a thing. Lord, I confess that I um, have worried without faith. Please forgive me and put your joy back in my heart. I'm going to spend 20 minutes from 10, a, 10 to 10, 20 p.m. this evening praising and blessing you. So that will be my project. So it would take about another 20 minutes. So total, it would be about 40 minutes. So I said 30 minutes last week, but 40 minutes would be more realistic. Now, about this devotional part. If you haven't learned how to do it yet, you can simply ask God to speak to you about what to apply to your life on that day after making a summary, you know, content part. Make a summary and you can skip the devotional part. Or um, you can approach me if you want to learn uh, more about the meditation part, okay? And listening to God takes time, like everything else, and depends on the sensitivity of your spiritual sensor. Um, but I'm sure your spiritual sensor will be more and more sensitive as you do it every day. As you live a day, after that, as you live a day, you know, uh, you know whenever you have a minute, draw a picture of a chapter you recall, um, you know, you recall an outline you studied, you made, and see what God is doing it. You know, this is an essential part of this project. You can't beat Satan with study 40 minutes of Bible study and meditation. You have to continually expand your narrow spiritual gate to your spiritual highway. Now, I'm sure um, with different purpose, Satan meditates the Word of God all day long to tempt us, to defeat us, right? But with 30, 40 minutes and, and forget about it, uh, we cannot resist Satan's temptations. So uh, whenever you have a little fraction of a time, um, just recall your Bible study. And then imagine yourself sitting on a table with your um, favorite tea looking out the window. Recalling every event from the book of Mark and condemn to, you know, and connect them to draw a masterpiece of your picture of Mark. You know, before the end of January, we are going to finish it. You know, imagine yourself doing it. You know, within four years, you are going, you are, you are going to be able to do it with the entire Bible. Wouldn't it be amazing? It will, it will give you abundant life on earth. It will lead you to the eternal kingdom. It will be like a powerful tornado that sweeps away your worries and anxiety. January 10th will be the day one. Start from Mark chapter 1. Let's take this journey together. My friends, giving a minimum doesn't keep any relationship. Jesus gave the maximum. He gave us everything of Him. 
Wouldn't you like to give 40 minutes of focus time and fractions of time during the day for the Lord who died for you, rose, and coming again? Please contact me and start this wonderful, awesome journey together. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Amen.